Thank you uh, for the invitation, Mr. Chairman, everybody in the audience to be here also at the end of the day. So uh, we are going to talk about present. We were talking about maybe a bit future before. Uh, I think uh, that everybody knows that I am not a big specialist of biochemistry and enzymes, but I am in a country where since 2018 uh, we are supposed uh, to test DPD in every patient that will receive uh, 5-FU or capecitabine, and it has changed a lot of things in daily practice. So here are my disclosures. From the 16th century, Paracels described that finally uh, only the dosage was important. The sentence was, everything is poison, but uh, nothing is poison, only the dosage makes the poison. And uh, this is still the case today. And 5-FU is a very old story. You knew that it's one of the first drugs that has been registered uh, in the late uh, 50s. And Chad Eiderberger on the picture has discovered the molecule, and we in GI cancer are using it uh, daily uh, till today. So fluoropyrimidine that we're going to talk about are 5-FU and capacitabine. Tegafu is also uh, one possible uh, drug, but it's not available anymore, I think, in most of European country. These drugs are of low cost. They are largely used, uh, mainly in GI cancer, but also in breast cancer and head and neck cancer. So fluoropyrimidine are responsible uh, as a drugs of 0.1 to 1% of toxic deaths. There is not only the DPD deficiency, you know that we can face some cardiac uh, problems sometimes and others. 5% uh, of major toxicity, grade 4 with hospitalization or uh, uh, severe, uh, uh, multiple severe adverse events, and 15 to 30% of grade 3, 4 severe toxicity. There is an antidote for 5-FU, which is uh, uridine triacetate, uh, and you can see that the cost of this molecule is very expensive, 50,000 euro. Uh, generally, when you buy it, it lasts for a year. If you don't have any problem with your patients, you drop it to the garbage, which is quite complex in our uh, economic problems uh, for health, to buy something so expensive and not to use it. So many hospitals don't have it. So when you look at the uh, 5-FU metabolism, what we can see here is that uh, 5-FU will mainly act on RNA. As you know, there is an alternate pathway on DNA, but what is very important is that here you got the DPD, and the DPD will metabolize the 5-FU for inactive metabolites. So when this enzyme is deficient, you are going to accumulate toxic metabolites and not inactive metabolites, and then, of course, you increase your patient's toxicities. So 5-FU, nobody knows exactly how many patients do receive 5-FU, so we've made extrapolation before this DPD story in France, assuming that not all patients with GI breast on head and neck receive 5-FU and documented on some registries that were uh, done before. But approximately uh, 80 to 100,000 patients per year are treated with 5-FU in my country. And the estimate is that this is responsible of approximately 500 deaths per year and probably 5,000 major toxicities. So can DPD deficiency testing uh, help to avoid that? Uh, what is deficiency in DPD? So we have two types of deficiency, the partial deficiency, which concerns 3 to 8 percent of the population, and here there are still a lot of uh, things to learn because we don't know exactly how to adapt the dosage in the partial deficiency. Not all the partial deficiency are the same, and the distribution of the product is not linear. Sometimes increasing the dose of 10 percent, you can induce major toxicities. And there is the complete deficiency, very dangerous, and contraindicating uh, completely 5-FU and capacitabine. And uh, once again, <coughs> sorry, the numbers are from 0.01 to 0.5%. So it's a big variation. What is the impact of to on toxicities of DPD deficiency? Generally, early toxicities during the first two cycles. Sometimes it's the second cycles, even in a deficient patient. Also, also sometimes what you can see is when you're moving from a patient, for example, to a maintenance therapy with capacitabine, 5-FU IV was well tolerated. The patient doesn't tolerate well, uh, really abnormally not well uh, capacitabine. Please test this patient if it's not obliged in your country upfront, because often it's a DPD deficiency that was uh, uh, partial, but still more important with capacitabine with that, uh, than with uh, 5-FU IV. So not all toxicities are linked to DPD deficiency. This is also important to tell that. Uh, we estimate approximately that 30% of severe toxicities uh, may be avoidable by testing DPD. Uh, in the literature, this ranges from 20 to 60%. And 
what we are frightened of the most, of course, is a patient death because of a complete deficiency. So here again, we are not in a very uh, new story. I say that uh, Paracels, it was uh, uh, 400 years ago, 5FU, it was 60 years ago, but we are talking about DPD deficiency since 30 years already. Uh, you can see uh, here the, the first New England publication uh, suggesting that this enzyme was uh, a main actor <coughs> of toxicity uh, when deficient in a 5FU treated patient. And the polemic on testing it is not also very uh, recent, as editorial exists since 25 years. The first one was in GCO in 1994. In my country, it was done approximately in 30% of the center before uh, the change of uh, practice. And what happened as often is that uh, someone that knew a journalist and was married with a politician had a big problem. And uh, then all the media, as you can see here, Mediapart, uh, Paris Match, uh, Le Figaro, big journals for us, uh, immediately react to say that we are killing people, we have avoidable death that occur every year, and that doctors with 5FU have killed at least 133 French people and intoxicate 1,500. So you can imagine uh, what is uh, the general opinion when such uh, papers are published in uh, big uh, daily journals. So we move to the uh, uh, testing of DPD. What can we do to test DPD? There are many methods. And I think uh, that uh, this is not completely, and the, the story is just starting. We still have to define what is the best way to proceed, but we still have a lot of uh, results. So we can uh, test the uracilemia, which is the most simple way to test it. We can test the UH2 uh, on U uh, uh, ratio, which uh, directly uh, measures the DPD uh, deficiency. But if you test only, sorry, I'll try to get it. If you test only uracil here, you still have a big, big, uh, good picture of what is happening. What are the concerns with uh, the phenotype testing? Probably it's more relevant than testing only the genotype, uh, but the problem here is that you have to do it quickly because the uh, tubes can be stored at room temperature only for one and a half hour for the dosage to be valid. Uh, if you have a four degree uh, tube, you can wait four hours, but not more. So generally you have to do that in the morning also, or you can centrifugate and imme immediately freeze the plasma. The cost is not very important, approximately 40 euro. The sensitivity and the specificity varies a lot, vary a lot in, uh, in the literature, but are around uh, 80%. The second way to, to test it is the genotype. So we know that there are four main variants. Uh, the uh, star 2A, star 13, C2846 AT, and H, uh, HAP B3. So the last one is not consensual. These are the four variants generally tested by the genetician if you ask for uh, a genotyping of DPD. And you can score it with a, a system of scoring that they will uh, uh, deliver to you after testing the patient. However, here the cost is a bit higher, 110 euro, uh, in France at least. And what you can see is that sensitivity is not excellent. Specificity is excellent, of course. So we are not testing all the deficient patients with this. There are a lot of other factors uh, which are not genetics for DPD deficiency. There are also uh, interaction uh, of medication. And even if we just focus on the genetic story, all these variants are adequate for Caucasian and not at all for African or Asian patients. So a lot of limitation with the genotype. Last year, uh, Boisdroncel and collaborator presented at the, the, this meeting uh, a way uh, of testing DPD, of uh, different ways to, of testing DPD. And what you can see is that if you test only one variant, uh, your sensitivity is not good at all. At the opposite, if you go to a multi-parametric approach which integrates genetic, uh, phenotyping, but also some clinical parameters, you then have a very good sensibility, specificity, etc. But I think that there is a lot of discussion on how to best test it. And currently, uh, in France, what is recommended at minima is the uracilemia. So since December 2018, we are supposed to do it. And it has been updated a few months ago. And now pharmacists are not allowed to deliver any 5FU if you are not able to prove that you got a result for DPD deficiency for your patients. So it's a real impact on our daily uh, practice. 
uh, it's based on uracil co concentration in plasma, as I said, and the two thresholds that you have to remember is uh, uracilemia uh, below 16 nanograms per milliliter, you have no deficiency, even partial probably. It's extremely rare that we observe any side effect in this patient. There is a huge uh, a gap between 16 and 150 nanograms per milliliter where it is all the possible partial deficiency and this has to be fine-tuned a bit, a bit more I think in the future and over 150 you are almost certain to have a complete DPD deficiency. So in our lab uh, in 2017 780 patients were tested from the hospital and from outside Last year it was 3,200 and now we are testing 500 patients every month. So you can see that people are, are playing the game. DPD deficiency has a, a, to be assessed by phenotype today at least, but you can do both, of course, phenotype and genotype. And it also has to be reimbursed, and this is important to deal with that uh, with our authorities and the governors and payers, because uh, sometimes they ask us to do things, but nobody is paid to do things, and then it's very difficult in daily practice to make it. I told you the story of the pharmacists, and currently uh, DPD is an option, but not recommended by our SMO guidelines. So to conclude, fluoropyrimidine are used since 60 years, DPD deficiency identified as a risk factor since 30 years, 5 ethyl cabocytabine are responsible for hundreds of toxic deaths and thousands of toxicities in Europe, in Europe every year. Testing DPD may avoid at least 30% of these unfavorable outcomes. So should we test DPD? You can imagine that I will answer yes. How? at least phenotype with this threshold of less than 16, 16 to 150 and more than 150 nanograms per milliliter. For who, I would say all patients that you want to treat with 5-FU or capacitabine. And if you got a complete deficiency, this contraindicate both 5-FU and capacitabine, and then you have to look for alternative therapeutic. Raltitrexate has been used in many centers, and probably we have to explore what happened with Raltitrexate in these patients. And trifluoridine tipiracine, a new fluoropinine that you know from guest streak and colon cancer that is not DPD uh, dependent. I would fin finally thank Olivier Boucher and Marianne Loriot for their help and their slides. Thank you very much.